If you're looking to pre-order Seance, there's only a few days left for that, and we've seen the Possessed Aura. More on that at the end of this video. Before we begin, I would like to remind everybody that you can go to metazooarchives.com to get more in-the-moment news with MetaZoo. There's also lore, gameplay, market analysis, and event information on the website. We also kicked off a MetaZoo Archives Facebook and Twitter, so if you'd like to use those platforms, please seek us out. Kicking us off last week, we got a live stream on Instagram from Mike, Steve Aoki, Afton, and Andy. Steve and Mike were both getting HeroQuest tattoos on their arms and opening some HeroQuest packs. Next, we need to talk about Twitch. Twitch does not have a category for MetaZoo. The closest thing is a Pokemon category, and it took a long time for that to get added to Twitch. One of our community members, Speedlemon, has put a suggestion into Twitch to get a MetaZoo category added. In order for that to work, we need to go and vote, so there has been a push to get the votes in. You can find a link to the suggestion in the description below, so please go to Twitch and vote for a MetaZoo category. With the conclusion of the Mothman Festival, which was highly successful, we got a look at a pile of the MetaZoo Festival promo cards. Alongside that, Andy had said, see you next year. Now those promos will be shipping out within the next few days if you were at the Mothman Festival. And this is just confirmation that MetaZoo also thought that the Mothman Festival was a successful event for them because they're planning to go again next year. And if you want to go to a similar event, there's the Loveland Frogman Festival that's happening in Ohio in March. Dee the Storyteller will be there presenting a thesis paper that she wrote. Now we got some more news on the tarot cards. The tarot cards were first available at Long Beach Collecticon. They were the black bordered sample tarot cards. In order to get them, you had to do the spin wheel and land on the seance crystal ball icon, or you needed to talk to Andy. He would ask you a suit. And if you got the suit of the card correct, you got to keep it. For those of you going to New York Comic Con this coming weekend, you can get black bordered tarot cards still. The first people in line are going to have a chance to get black bordered tarot cards from Andy or Mike. So if you're interested to get those tarot cards and you're going to NYCC, be early and be ready. The red border tarot cards will be available during New York Comic Con. Starting October 6th, they will have them on eBay Live. Now, eBay Live is not the eBay marketplace. They're not going to have a marketplace page set up where we're going to go and we're going to quickly get in there and buy the tarot cards. eBay Live is very similar to Whatnot or Drip. It's an auction platform. There have been hints at various different things going up on eBay with MetaZoo over the past week. They're quickly taken down and it's most likely the products that are being loaded in for eBay Live. Now, what does that mean for the price of the red bordered tarot cards? Well, if it's going to be an auction, it's likely going to be set at a base price, and then we're going to be bidding against each other to get the tarot cards. So I would imagine that the first set of tarot cards, or the first few sets of tarot cards that go up on eBay Live, are going to have some pretty intense bidding wars. Honestly, I hope that's not fully true, but from what I know about eBay Live, that does seem to be the case. Signups have gone up to receive the fall LGS kits. If this is similar to the summer LGS kits, we can expect a splattering of products to help LGSs run events. So I'm expecting that we'll see UFO booster box, we'll see some UFO theme decks, various release event boxes from across the Benazoo releases. And you'll also see the LGS exclusive playmats, the window clings, the exclusive stickers, as well as a number of exclusive promos. And if you did sign up and you get accepted to receive a fall LGS kit, those are expected to go out sometime around mid-October. Collecticon Denver is coming up on October 15th and 16th, and we can expect a tournament at that event. There will be a professional constructed tournament on October 15th, and if you're attending and play in that tournament, you'll have a chance to win the first, second, and third place promos. Casual events will also be held on both the 15th and the 16th, so people can learn to play at the Collecticon. And if we look at the prize support for that, we have first place at $1,500, a first place medal, a participation medal, and a ton of UFO product. You get three booster boxes, three spell books, one theme deck brick, five release event decks, and four blisters. 
For second place, you're taking home $1,000, second place medal, participation medal, and another splattering of UFO product. Third place is going to take home $750, the third place medal, a participation medal, and a splattering of UFO product. And fourth through eighth place are going to take home $350, the participation medal, and much less UFO product, but still some UFO product. It's also worth noting that Denver Collecticon is the first place that you're going to see the Seance Collecticon packs. So if you're looking to get the Collecticon stamped Seance cards, and you're going to Denver, watch out for those spoiler packs. Last week we talked about MetaZoo's partnership with Amazon AMP, and this week, Steve Aoki, Mike, and Andy sat down and talked together on AMP. It was a really interesting conversation, obviously, with Steve Aoki, it was about HeroQuest, and we did learn some interesting tidbits there. We learned about Hero being a time traveler, and the HeroQuest set is futuristic, set in a time when Indrid had won the war. So we're getting a look at what could happen if our heroes lose. There does seem to be more to the story that they don't want to spoil, and the pullet rings, the black pullet ring we've seen in Genesis, has to do with that story. Hero is collecting these rings. Alongside that, they announced the next HeroQuest set, which is coming out in November, HeroQuest Remix. The CD will feature a number of remixes from Genesis, but all of the cards will be new to HeroQuest. There's gonna be somewhere between 60 to 75 cards, and Hero is gonna return, but as one of the factions. They didn't want to spoil the faction that he's going to be, but honestly, my guess is going to be Extance. In Genesis, we collected the Black Pullet Ring, and my guess is that's going to be related to turning Hero into an Extant. That also means with this theory that Hero Quest Remix will have another Pullet Ring in it, just one, and that will then lead into the next Hero Quest set with whatever Hero's faction is going to be in the next set. Hero Quest Genesis was wildly successful in the community. Everybody loves the cards. They're a huge chase. So if you loved Hero Quest Genesis and you got some, or if you missed out on Genesis and you wish you got it, be ready for a release in November for Hero Quest Remix. And we have seen already one of the beasties. We've seen an Oyo Wakinian. We got a look at two more of the plushies that MetaZoo is going to be releasing. We had a look first at Golden Bear, and honestly, my first thought was Simba. No offense to the designers here, this does seem to be the most generic looking of all of the plushies we've seen so far. And as with the tease of the Mothman, we got a look at the backside of Hodag. A long time ago, it was teased that we'd first see the plushies at New York Comic Con. It is unclear if we're going to be able to purchase them during Comic Con, but I do imagine with the teases that we're seeing, that they will at least be displayed at New York Comic Con. The Trick No Treat set had released on October 1st. This released at noon Eastern time on the MetaZoo Marketplace. The Trick No Treat bags consist of 20 packs of MetaZoo cards for the Halloween set. And we know that these are going to include first and second edition promos. There's gonna be 14 new first edition promos and five second edition promos from last year's Halloween set. Each bag also comes with a MetaZoo mask. We have seen the Mothman mask already. We know there's a Loveland Frogman mask, and that's depicted on the box. Indrid Cold's mask is hinted at with the activated Indrid mask card. And in one of the card arts that was teased during the release, we can actually see what looks like a Majora's mask type seller with a backpack full of masks. In his backpack, he has Momo, he has Lechuza, he has Mothman. And the mask seller is wearing a half mask that is white with black mouth and eyes and a tear. It has been confirmed that each of the promo packs will contain one card. And the overall print run of the Trick No Treat bags was 10,000. So we're looking at a grand total of around 200,000 cards and just over 10,000 of each if there's an even distribution. It's unclear at this time which ones will be hollow and which ones will not, but we have seen that in past Halloween releases where they're not all hollow. And I did buy multiple of these. I am hoping to get one of each mask, and I'm going to be handing some of these out at Halloween. For the promos that we've seen, we have a second edition Chaos Crystal Crunch. This is familiar to you if you got the Halloween packs last year. And this allows you to fatigue this page and place it into the afterlife, generate two aura of any type. New for this year, we have a Mask Merchant 2 per spellbook. It costs 3 neutral aura to contract and has ADLP. It enters the arena Awakened due to its fleet trait. And it has a power called Care to Trade. You can pay one neutral aura, and you may search your spellbook for an artifact costume and place it into your chapter. 
Then, the next artifact costume you contract in this turn costs one less aura to contract. So it allows you to find a costume and bring it into the arena sooner. Worst case, you can't afford to contract at the same turn, but you might be able to next turn. The third one that we've seen is the Halloween Halloween. It's a suburban Terra. You can have three per spell book. And the effect here, at the start of each turn, the active caster may contract an artifact costume from either their limbo, cemetery, or afterlife. So you have ways to bring costumes back into the arena. And we've seen two costume in mask cards. The first is the Frogman costume in mask, which costs two water, has 10 LP, and it is an equipment. You must be wearing a mask to contract this page, and it allows you to equip the artifact to a target beastie. That equipped beastie gains Scared, Burn, and Poison 2 on its attacks. If the equipped beastie uses a power after resolving that power, you may send the artifact into the afterlife to contract an artifact with the name Activated Frogman Mask from any place with an aura cost of zero. So that confirms another card in the set, the Activated Frogman Mask. We have seen an Activated Indrid Mask, so that also hints that we're going to be getting an Indrid Costume and Mask. And the last card that we've seen from this set is the Lechuza Costume and Mask. You can have three per spell book, it costs one Spirit Aura to contract, and has an LP of 10. You must be wearing a mask to contract this page, and it allows you to equip the artifact to a target beastie and choose a status effect on a beastie's attack in the arena. So if there's a beastie in the arena with burn, you could choose burn. Attacks of the equipped beastie also inflict the chosen status effect as long as this artifact is equipped. So in our burn example, if you were to attach this to graze, for instance, the graze attack would also burn the opposing beasties. You may send this artifact into the cemetery when an opposing caster controls a beastie with two or more different status effect indicators to contract an artifact named activated Lechuza Mask from any place with an aura cost of zero. So again, we also know that there is an activated Lechuza Mask. For the activated masks, it's unclear if those are going to be special promos that you get with the masks in the bags, or if these are going to be part of the core set of Trick No Treat. We did get another look this week at the What's Your Passion pendants. We have this picture here of Mike wearing the Mothman pendant. The pendant here is a silver Mothman. It looks gorgeous. I'm not sure who the individual on the right is, but she's wearing a sewer alligator pendant. This is the first time we're seeing sewer alligator. And in the bottom right, we can see somebody wearing the gold babe pendant. The What's Your Passion release was originally slated to be the end of September. Obviously, we are in October now, so I do expect that we'll see this soon. And these will be accompanied by two promo cards, Silver Passion and Gold Passion, which allow you to recover life points if you're wearing silver or gold jewelry. I would like to take a second to say congratulations to Live Pokey Options, or Bailey. He's going to be the first individual receiving the Content Creator Medal and the Influencer Medal. We first got teased the art for the Content Creator Medal back in February, on February 15th, and it features the Hopkinsville Goblin posing for a picture on what looks like Instagram. Two weeks later, on March 1st, forms had been put up so that we could apply to get Content Creator Medals, as well as Patreon Medals, Tournament Medals, etc. I did apply at the time for a Content Creator Medal, and on that form there was no mention of an Influencer Medal, so it's interesting here that we're getting two. Considering that Bailey is going to be receiving both, I do believe that we're looking at two tiers of Content Creator Medals. We're looking at the base tier, which is Content Creator Medal, and the flavor text there actually hints that it's the base level. And the flavor text reads, Look at you, that thing you're doing, keep doing that, very cool, so cool, keep it up. So this hints at a medal that is the base tier, saying that, Hey, good job, you're creating content, keep it up and you'll get something more. And the MetaZoo Influencer Medal are for people that have gone above and beyond. Bailey with Live Poke Auctions is somebody that is very integrated into the MetaZoo ecosystem. Just recently, he opened 2,000 spellbooks on stream that took a little over a week, and he opened 500 Nightfall Booster Boxes. He's also commonly at the conventions with MetaZoo, doing openings and giveaways, etc. It's unclear what the distinction is between the two when you actually qualify for an Influencer Medal, what I do love about the Influencer Medal, and in my opinion, this is a reference to Argos. There's been a long-running joke from months ago that Argos is a lizard man, so I find it quite funny that they chose the Green Clod Monster for the Influencer Medal. Since the forms did go up at the beginning of March, it's also unclear on when they actually judged channels to receive these medals. I applied March 1st. If they looked at my channel back then, 
I was much smaller. I probably only had 150 subscribers at that time. So at the very least, I am hoping to receive the Content Creator Medal. Alongside the Creator and Influencer Medals, they also did show us the business cards that were being created for Andy, Mike, and Shamid. Mike's depicts him standing in front of a Mothman on a city walkway. Shaw's depicts Shaw standing in front of Bigfoot, and for his height, it's actually 75% of a Bigfoot, which I find quite hilarious. And in my opinion, Andy's is the most beautiful of the three. With all of the inks, the chaos crystal, if you actually look at Andy's hollow pattern, it has the angry chaos face, which is just amazing. And if you want to receive one of these, they will be giving them out at New York Comic Con to a select few people. The information on the card actually does have their email addresses and phone numbers on them as well. They are true business cards. Madizu also had a birthday this week for a member of the support staff. Catman17 is turning... And Mike had said that before Catman was working in support, he was working for the Royal Crown as a pigeon trainer. So, happy birthday, Catman710. If you want to be a playtester for SCP and Native, now is the time to sign up. I'll put a link in the description below to the form to do that. As a content creator, I actually don't want to sign up because if you're a content creator and you sign up to be a playtester and get accepted, you can no longer create content for an undisclosed amount of time. So those of you that want to be playtesters, if you do also want to be a content creator, it's probably not your best choice. But if you're not a content creator, what do you got to lose? And now for the trivia. In last week's question, I asked you to name the three promo beasties in the UFO Walmart hangers. And the answer to that is Lechuza, Hatman, and Bamola. Most people didn't have any trouble with that, so let's get all these names on the spin wheel here, and we'll spin to see who wins this week's $15 gift card to Immortal Workshop. And the winner is Caster's Cast. Going forward, we're going to make the questions a little bit trickier and more along the lines of what you're going to see in gameplay or an MCO exam. So for this week's question, if you're controlling three Ohio Grassman Beasties and your opponent is controlling four Tripaderos, what is the maximum damage that an Ohio Grassman can do? Answer that question correctly and you'll be in the running for next week's $15 gift card to Immortal Workshop. And while we're on the subject of Immortal Workshop, the seance pre-orders for partners start on October 5th at midnight. So if you're up late on Tuesday night and it just happens to be midnight, you can pre-order some seance from Immortal Workshop. It's also worth noting that John with Immortal Workshop has updated my affiliate link. Up until now, you could use my affiliate link in the description below and I would get a kickback for your purchases. Now, if you use my affiliate link, you'll actually get 5% off your entire order as well. And that's good for anything in the store. So if you want to save some money on MetaZoo, and if you want to support this channel, use the affiliate link in the description below. Now, Immortal Workshop does have a pretty sweet bundle up for offering for Seance. It's $305 and it comes with a Seance booster box, a Seance spell book, a release event box, five theme decks or one of each theme deck, four blister packs, one of each art, a special edition exclusive seance mat. This was done by Lord Korg. It features Walking Sam and Sentry Box Devils. You can also see necromancy hands coming out of the earth. There's also a black dog and Morpheus. A lot of thought went into this mat. This is the second mat done by Immortal Workshop that also features one of my logos. The UFO play mat featured my One-Eyed Crow logo, and this one has the Cryptid Nation News logo. You'll also be getting a Hero Quest CD sealed with promo, and a random sealed promo, and that can be from MagicCast, Hero Quest, Cryptid Nation 2nd Edition box toppers, LGS promos, and WPT promos. And there's a ton of value in the main pre-order bundle there. Obviously, Seance can't be sold below MSRP, but you get the extras of the Hero Quest CD, the promo, and the amazing playmat. The quality on these is great. If you got the UFO playmat, you know what I'm talking about. He's also doing a bundle where if you pre-order a Seance booster box for $140, you also get a Hero Quest CD. So there's a ton of added value there, and Hero Quest has been wildly loved by the community. If purchasing single items is more your thing, you could purchase just a blister pack or a spell book or a release event box. He's also offering a bundle of all of the pack arts for the blister packs and all of the release event boxes. If you do order the set of all five release event boxes, please note that they will come opened to confirm that there's one of each promo in the box and all contents of the release event box will be included in that sale. So if you're looking to pre-order Seance on October 5th, the day that partners open up their pre-orders, please consider purchasing from Immortal Workshop using the affiliate link below. And now, our top story. One of the first cards that we ever got to see for Seance has officially fully been 
revealed. Back in mid-August, we got our first look at the top half of the Possessed Aura. And on the 29th this week, while showing off the hollow pattern of the cards, we got a full look at what the Possessed Aura actually does. But first, I'd like to talk about everything that was spoiled in this tweet. The first thing you notice when looking at the video on the tweet is the music. This is the first time that we're actually hearing the added color seance chorus. Now, obviously, some of the lyrics have been teased before, come with me, skeptics and believers, join the seance, etc. So we did know some of the lyrics, but the song sounds amazing. The added color Nightfall song has been a fan favorite for a very long time, and I think that Seance might actually unseat it as the most popular added color theme song. The second thing you notice is the hollow pattern. This is what they're really trying to tease with this card, I believe. And we've seen the hollow pattern in a few other teases this week with the Sentry Box Devil and with an old scratch card. And you can see a number of things in the hollow pattern. You can see the Seance Crystal Ball, in the Sentry Box Devil, you can actually see tarot cards and the Metazoo Pentagram. And what we've seen from the teases in the Discord and this tweet is that the holofoil pattern, the quality seems to be very similar to what we've seen starting with eBay Wilderness and beyond. So there doesn't seem to be much of a new holo technology used here. It has been teased that they are looking into hologram holographics. The third thing that we see in this tweet is actually very subtle. The bottom right corner of the card has the seance stamp. So this possessed aura that's being held in the video is coming from a spoiler pack. If you want to get one of these spoiler packs, you can get them this weekend at New York Comic Con. And lastly, obviously, the possessed aura itself and its ability. The possessed aura marks our third special aura card, the first being in Wilderness with the Prism Aura, and the second being in UFO with Neutrality Totality Aura. Possessed Aura states that you may fatigue this aura page at any time to generate one aura of any aura a basic aura page in the arena can generate. So what does that mean? If you're running a forest spirit deck and your opponent is running a water deck, you could fatigue possessed aura to then use a forest, spirit, or water aura when contracting a page. Possessed aura's effect is very useful for dual aura spellbooks. One of the problems right now with dual aura spellbooks is that when you're running it, you have to then gauge which auras on the field what's going to be useful. So for example, if you're running a forest spirit deck and you have two forests and one spirit down, but you have something in your chapter that you want to contract that needs two spirit, well, either you made the wrong choice and you put an extra forest down when you could use the spirit, or you just don't have the aura available to be able to contract that card and you need to wait until you pull another spirit aura. If you had a possess aura on the field, you could actually choose what's more beneficial at the time. You could choose to do forest or spirit as long as you're controlling one of those basic auras already. So it seems like the goal for Possessed Aura is to combat the issues that you have with having the correct amount of a type of aura when running dual aura spellbooks. I'm going to be honest, I don't know if I'm going to run it, because if I have the choice between Prism Aura and Possessed Aura, I'm going to run Prism Aura. You can get any aura you want with a Prism Aura. And personally, I'm not interested in running both Prism Aura and Possessed Aura in a spell book because the more you load up on your special auras, the more you're going to take away from your basic auras, which is going to make it harder to use Possessed Aura effectively. So while I do think it's an interesting card, I don't know how playable it's actually going to be if you already have Prism Auras. For people that don't have Prism Aura and are starting in Seance or have not been lucky enough to pull Prism Auras and are lucky enough to pull a Possessed Aura, great, that's very useful. And I also think that Possessed Aura is going to be highly collectible, and that has a lot to do with the reduced print run for Seance. Seance is only gonna have 50,000 of each skew, so if you then cut the whole print run in half, what you're looking at, assuming even distribution against Wilderness, is that there's gonna be half as many of these in the wild as Prism Auras. So you could be looking at a case here where the card isn't as effective as a Prism Aura in gameplay, but it's gonna be worth more because there's going to be less of them available. Well, that's all I wanted to talk about for this week. I hope that there was some information that was useful to you. And if you want to check out the latest podcast episode of Cryptid Conversations, you can check that out right there, where we go over all of the seance spoilers to date.